Hello, I'm Jeremiah Nolapo from the University of Vermont, and I'll be presenting our work on stolen Facebook accounts to you. This is for the 2021 Usenix Security Symposium. As we all know, social accounts often display demographic attributes such as age, gender, location, and so many others. And uh, over time, the value of social accounts actually rises because a lot of interesting content accumulates in there, including personal information. And uh, demographic attributes and sensitive information in social accounts can be abused by malicious parties. In fact, such content has been abused by malicious parties. Our goal in this work is to understand the influence of demographic attributes, such as the ones I mentioned previously, on attacker behavior in stolen social accounts. Now that must be done without harming any real users. Uh, I want to note here that this is different from a general understanding of attacker behavior in stolen accounts. In this study, we focus specifically on the influence of demographic attributes on the behavior of criminals. In other words, when criminals connect to accounts, how do the demographic attributes of the accounts, the compromised accounts, influence the behavior of attackers in such accounts? So uh, we start by creating and populating fake accounts, otherwise known as honey accounts. Now, why fake accounts? Well, as I mentioned before, studies like this must be carried out without harming any real users. Instead of using real accounts that belong to real people, we use fake accounts instead. But then we populate those fake accounts, otherwise known as honey accounts, with data to the point at which those honey accounts look realistic. And then we set up a system otherwise known as the monitor infrastructure to observe what happens within those accounts. We leak credentials that point to those money accounts at venues where criminals are known to leak credentials. And then we record and analyze data that accrues from the money accounts and then shed light on the behavior of criminals within stolen accounts. Now, this is an overview of our system. So before uh, describing the monitor infrastructure itself, I want to talk a, a bit about DYI archives in Facebook accounts. Now, each Facebook account has this feature known as DYI, which stands for Download Your Information. Now, this archive contains a record of activity within each account. So each account has one. And, uh, the DYI archive uh, contains information, for example, about timeline posts, uh, including the content of such posts and the time they were created and so on. Uh, so at the end of experiments, we download the DYI archives of all the accounts and uh, analyze that data offline. Also, uh, we set up a mail server to receive email, email notifications from the Facebook accounts that we set up. Now, such email notifications get sent, for example, when someone tries to change the password of an account. So the account automatically sends out uh, an email about password change. So we set up more than a thousand realistic Facebook accounts and uh, we distributed evenly the age and gender demographic attributes across those accounts. As I mentioned before, we populated the accounts with realistic data and we sourced the data publicly. So we used publicly available data, no private data uh, was involved in this process. To lure criminals into interacting with the accounts, we leaked credentials pointing to, to thoughts of the accounts on the surface web and the dark web. So we leaked those credentials on paste sites uh, at those uh, places. And then we monitored the accounts for six months. So what did we observe? 
In total, we observed more than 300 unique accesses with uh, records of cookies, which are unique identifiers. Now, those accesses were observed in more than 200 accounts. And those accesses resulted in more than 1,000 actions. Now, there are various types of actions uh, where you consider Facebook accounts. In this work, we labeled those actions in different ways. For example, if an attacker logs on to an account and then does nothing afterwards, we label that as a curious action. If another attacker logs onto an account and uses the Facebook search bar to search for terms of interest, we label that as a searcher action. If another attacker logs on to some Facebook account and uh, writes a message, for example, a private message to another account, then we label that as a chatty action. And we observed that curious searcher and chatty activity actually dominated the actions table. Now let's talk about the age of, uh, of accounts. So when criminals connect to uh, adult accounts in our data set, they do more of adding and removing of friends than they do when they connect to teen accounts. On the other hand, when they connect to teen accounts, they do more of profile editing in those accounts than they do in adult accounts. Also, they do more of chatting and post creation in teen accounts than they do in adult accounts. So this indicates already that there are differences along the age dimension. There are differences in the behavior of criminals depending on the demographic attributes in the accounts that they breach. Now let's talk about gender. We observed that when criminals breach accounts that belong to women or girls, uh, they do more of adding and removing of friends in such accounts than they do in male accounts. Interestingly, we observed that when they connect in our data set, when they connect to accounts that belong to women or girls, these criminals don't do any profile editing, but they edit the profiles of male accounts. Also, criminals do more of search activity in male accounts than they do in female accounts. So having observed those differences, we went further and constructed graphs from the actions we have observed. So uh, we constructed those graphs from the timestamp time stamp information of the actions we recorded. And uh, we'll see differences once again in the actions, the transitions between actions in uh, the female accounts versus the male accounts, as we can see here. As I mentioned before, none of the female accounts recorded profile edits. And that is why we have that disconnected pronoun up there. As we can see, that is much different from what we observe in the male accounts. Profile editing happens frequently in the male accounts. So uh, talking about where the accesses were recorded came from, we recorded 415 uh, IP addresses that connected to the accounts. And those IP addresses originated from 53 different countries. So when we checked those IP addresses uh, against lists of uh, Tor exit nodes, we found that 39 of them uh, actually were Tor exit nodes. Now, I must mention at this point that although these IP addresses appear uh, to be geographically present in 53 different countries, it is possible that some of them uh, were VPNs and proxies. So we may not be seeing the exact geographical location of these IP addresses. Having said that, uh, we actually plotted out the uh, locations from which these IP addresses showed up. And as we can see, 
the IP addresses in the United States tend to be clustered around the coasts, the coastal areas. And uh, we see a dense cluster of IP addresses from Europe. Also, India, uh, we, we recorded a good number of IP addresses from India. Perhaps not too surprisingly, we didn't record any access from China. This is because Facebook is banned in China. So what does all of this actually mean? It means we need to rethink the systems that detect and mitigate malicious accesses in online accounts. And in fact, we need to factor in demographic attributes and possibly other attributes. It's our hope that this work will actually constitute a foundation on which further work in this area will be done. Now, talking about ethics, we thought very carefully about ethics while setting up this uh, project. And uh, as a result, we used test accounts instead of real accounts. We used publicly available data, and we asked our contacts at Facebook to keep an eye on their accounts, and uh, we obtained ethics approval from our institution. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening. My contact details are as listed on the screen. I'd also like to thank my co-authors, Nectarius and Despina from Facebook. Thank you very much. Gianluca from Boston University. Thank you. You've all been amazing co-authors.